Welcome to Armchair Preaching, a podcast of the First Presbyterian Church in Lakeland, Florida. This is a podcast about God's Word, the beauty of the gospel, and what it takes to communicate that truth to others. I'm your host, Pastor Zach McGowan, and on today's episode, Pastor John and I unpack the second week in our series on the Lord's Prayer. We hope you enjoy the conversation. Welcome back, everybody, to Armchair Preaching. Hello. I always forget that we're on camera. I know. Got a yeah. camera. Hello, everybody. Um, that's, that's a nice new addition, though. J- yeah, yeah. And I think I've I think I've figured out a way to make it not take two for, hours forever. Uh, two hours to fit, do, and then two hours to upload and yeah, la- produce. And- the uploading, I have no. You know that that's one of those things where it's really about the internet speed. Really, I mean, there are times where I actually have to take it to my house because my internet speeds faster at my house to actually get it to upload properly. But um, easier when it's just the two of us. Last week we had Josh. Yeah, and, that was w- new. Which yeah. was new. So I had to learn how to do three people with the same kind of basic camera setup. And I learned some things about that. So it worked out well. But Yeah, that was three people with two camera setups. And you went in with your uh, with your your video editing tool and you cut the two of us. Zach, yes. Josh and I were in, in the same shot. Yeah. He cut us into separate shots. Well, yeah, it looked like you guys were on different sides of the room when actually you were right right side yeah. by side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right side. That's the magic, the magic of, of magic, photography. The magic of editing. Um, today we are second second week in our series in mm-hmm. the Lord's Prayer. Uh, apt, uh, you know, for lots of different reasons. But there was a lot going on in the weekend yeah. of of yeah. of our and, church and, and, and the, the week, life of our and the church. week leading, leading up to it. Yeah, the week leading up to it. So uh, we'll just run through kind of a litany of things that were were happening. You yeah. know, we'll go 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 backwards. Uh, you know, we had a big session meeting on Tuesday on, night. On Tuesday night, which was preceded on the previous week by a session retreat on October nineteenth. Yeah, which was preceded by one hurricane, which was preceded by another Second hurricane. hurricane. You know, and first hurricane, yeah, so you get all that. And, and then... And that come, session meeting had, that was preceded with a, with a, with a pretty massive um, data dump uh, email that yeah. went out to everybody. There's a lot of reading behind that. Yeah. And, um, and then the weekend we have a huge, one of our largest outreach events of yes. the whole year, uh, Costumes and Candy, uh, which had, you know, we had over 800 people. 122, I think, 122 volunteers total, oh, yeah. uh, which is a massive deal. Uh, make it work. And Do you have enough candy? We did. We did. Yeah, uh, yeah. Day, day of, I, you know, I always get nervous. Yeah. When I start, you know, my wife is, she's a, she's a number cruncher. She's, she's so brilliant when it comes to calculating numbers and how many pieces of candy. And so she, we came in early on Friday uh, and we started, she went to the candy and calculated that we had 14,350 something pieces. <laughs> oh my gosh, to the, to the piece. And then we said, oh yeah, yeah, she knows. And then, and then we said, okay, how many spots do we have and how many kids do we think approximately are going to be there? And so how many pieces per kid? And then I was like, I got nervous about it not being enough. So then we went out and spent Three hundred and fifty, four hundred dollars to get another four hundred. You know, get another six thousand pieces of candy or whatever. Oh just, gosh. just to go over that twenty thousand mark. Yeah, That's right. just, it's just one of those things. We've done this four years, and so we kind of know. So it's a big deal. There's a lot of manual labor that goes into it. Yeah, I was really glad you uh, you gave Julia a shout out on your uh, on your Facebook post. And I know you don't you don't do as much posting. As, I don't. As said, but you gave her a shout out because what you said was was spot on. And so yeah. Julie, if you're listening to this. Uh, well done. I agree completely. Yeah. Well done to you. Yeah, she's, you know, and it's and not the, just this. It's, every, it's everything that, yeah, she, that you do here. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we've, you know, you know what it's like. You have, you have young children, right? It's yeah. very hard to do much beyond young, young children when yeah. you have young, young children. They just, they take up everything. Well, now that our kids are older and they're also able to be participants participants and yeah. in, in trying to teach them, you know, this is, this is how we, we were always before we had 
kids at all. And then yeah. we had kids and it's like your whole world kind of shrinks, shrinks, shrinks. shrinks. Yeah. So um, I'm glad that she's able to, I, honestly, I don't know. It, we th- Those types of events and, and many, many other things like children's ministry and, and youth ministry things wouldn't happen without her. But, but all that to say, it was a gigantic weekend for yeah. that. And then you get to Sunday. Well, then Seal, Seal and I, it was, it was her high school class reunion her of, class. of all weekends. It was, it, it was this weekend. So we drove to Palatka we were there on Friday, and uh, and then came back. We didn't get back till eleven thirty on Saturday night. Cool. So it was a late night. It's like watching. It's like when you have an eight o'clock eight o'clock game. That's right. And you got to watch every every play of the game. You know, it's, you're you're awake. So you, so then you can't go to sleep. So yeah. so we we I came in I came in on fumes on yeah. on, on Sunday morning. And it was a, and big, it was a, big, it was a big day. It was a big Sunday. Uh, eight fifteen was roughly normal, right? Yeah. I mean, roughly yeah. normal, but then 1030. A little light, actually, because I think some of those folks who normally go to 815 go to wanted to go to 1030 and catch the whole and we, we have a big event fanfare. in the classic service called Kirkin of the Tartans. Uh, yeah, so, we had uh, you know we had 19 banners carried in by probably you know, 30 people carried them in. We had people carrying in the Bible, carrying in the cross. Bagpipers came in and had a little ceremony for the blessing of the families, the Kirking of the Tartans. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so that that was nice. And then we had a baptism. It was uh, if you have, have you heard this yet, but if you haven't heard it yet, it was it was one of the most memorable baptisms because you know you never know what you're going to get with a two, with a two year old Conrad and yeah. Conrad was amazing. Yeah, and good kid. He came in in a kilt for one thing, and he was just all talkative and just it, it was great. It was really a very very special moment. Yeah. But it was another component. It was yeah. another piece of it. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot a lot going on. And then you know we if if you were in the live services. Uh, you know that we we addressed something in our, the announcements re- relative to to um, the the uh, one of the amendments on yeah. the ballot here, which is not a typical thing for us. Rare, uh, that's very, a rare thing. Very rare. In fact, I eleven years have never. We, we've spoken about issues related to things on the ballot, but, mm-hmm. but we've never fully you know addressed a ballot measure, and you know that came out of the session meeting from Tuesday and you had to deliver that news. I had to deliver that news. There was a lot of, you know, kind of exchanges about how to do it as well yeah. as we possibly can. Yeah. And uh, so that, that and actually Nikki, Nikki, because uh, for the Kirking of the Tartans, I was in the back, so I didn't even get them. And Nikki was the one who, who delivered that message, which, oh, wow. which kind of makes, I mean, she's, she's the chair of the church mm-hmm. and culture committee, which was a resource to the session to prepare them for the, for the discussion that led mm-hmm. to the vote. So it kind of made sense that she, she would do it. But I, I also brought it up in my live, in the live version of it. I brought yeah. it up in the, in the message yeah. as you did. And you can sort of hear you lining that up through several places in your, in your message. But, uh, yeah. but, well, uh, it's like we but said it was, before. but that was, that was a big, that was a big thing. And, and I don't know. I mean, I've, I've had a lot of, a very positive response mm-hmm. from people saying it's it's just good to hear clarity on that, mm-hmm. and then nobody felt like it was uh, the, saying you need this is how you're going to go vote. Mm-hmm. You still feel the autonomy to vote as you as you are going to vote, but you we also know where we are clear where we're clear as a church. I've had several people say we're just really thankful that we're we're clear and we're not heavy handed about it. Yeah, yeah, we try not to be, and, and we've talked about this before. You know, we don't go proof texting for things to, you know, controversial issues, right? Yeah. You know, and there's a lot, I've, I've heard, I, I, one example, I, you know, and, and you and I are both, you know, pro-life. That's, I don't, this is not a secret to anybody. Right. Uh, but I, I've heard other uh, pro-life pastors talk about the the birth of John the Baptist, for example, and then sh- shoehorn a, 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 a pro-life kind oh of message in, in the middle of that. Right. And, uh, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in Luke's gospel, you know, that the whole thing. And, um, and this, this week, you know, I, I didn't, when, it, when we got to, when I talked about Genesis one, I mean, to me, it's that, that is yeah. a natural place to talk sure. about the, the image of God. And especially as you're talking about kingdom, which we'll get to in just a moment, but yeah. to me, that's a natural place to do that. You know, uh, it was funny being, uh, uh traveling the, uh, on Friday and Saturday, um, and being in in Palatka and being seeing a, a lot of signs, what we did, what we did, was soft. Yeah. By comparison, there were some of them that had the big signs out front, vote no on on Amendment Four, and I've heard at least one uh, people person in in Palatka say that their pastor said, "Don't don't even talk to me if you're if you're pro-abortion, if you're you're, if you're pro-choice, you know, don't. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't hear so, and so it was so. 
There's all there's a pretty wide spectrum here, and I think we I think we had a very reasoned, moder, modest approach to to this that that allowed autonomy for the people, but also made our will, you know, where we stand as leaders. Yeah. Right? One of the things, though, you and I talked about before the message went out was that the understanding that there is a difference between just being pro kind of abortion and or, or anti-abortion and then being pro-life, you know. Yeah. And, and one of the things that we we have to wrestle with as a church is how do we still maintain support for the families, the the mothers, the the children after they're born? You yeah. Know? Because very rarely is someone in a position where they are, you know, they're considering an abortion just because they think that's, you know, they're, they're mm-hmm. doing so primarily out of desperation, uh, not knowing how they're going to raise the child, not knowing how, how, how adoption agencies work and all those things. And having to think through those things is, is an important part of what it means to be pro-life, pro-mother, pro, pro-child as yeah. well too. Right. Yeah. And no, that's, that, it, it's, it's, and that, that, that's true. That's it, why it's, it's, it, you don't take, make these decisions easily. Because you can't you can't just be narrow about it. You can't just be you know you, you got to be a broad-minded about it. You say okay that all of that yes we got to think about the the life of the women. We also got yeah. to think about this in relationship to other controversial it, issues absolutely. out there, and, and do the same thing with other controversial issues. It's, it's fine to have an a, a posture, position, and and an idea of what God leads. You think God leads just to understand and believe and do. But are we are we taking that also broad-mindedly, and are we also supporting on contra- other controversial issues the implications of having that position? Well, and that you know that really brings up a good point that I I think I I really want to make sure people understand. You know, there there and there there are articles that go that kind of circulate this time of year. And we I don't know about you, I get I can't tell you how many art news articles I get on both sides of the you know the mm-hmm. political spectrum about. What churches should and should not do. What preachers should. I, I love how people tell us what we. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. You feel like sometimes your email is just one long heckle, right? From like you feel like yeah. a comedian, like they're just, yeah. they're yelling at you. But one of the things that has come up and 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 it came up in the Agape Sunday School class is this idea that well, there are certain political uh, topics and cer- certain governmental issues that we are voting on that have theological and moral implications and certain ones that don't. Right. True. Or, I, or certain ones that have uh, stronger or more obvious ones. I mean, you can well, that maybe, sort of make, make a general case yeah. for all of them, I guess. But, but I, but I, it's interesting, you know, one of my professors in seminary, uh, Dr. John frame, who is one of the best known systematic theologians in the reform tradition in the 20th and 21st century. He wrote a book called Doctrine of the Christian Life, which is a very light uh, 1,100-page read, yeah. um, but it's a breakdown of the Ten Commandments. And one of the things that he talks about is this concept of a diaphora, right? It's it's uh, A diaphora is uh, this, basically it's the concept that there are some issues that are non-moral, right? There, there's no moral implication and that Christians take this to mean that there are some things that God doesn't care about, you know, how we, mm. you know, and, and his, his contention is, well, that's absolutely not true. <laughs> that There are no issues because, you know, if Paul writes, whatever you do, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God, then everything, even the, the most minor of topics can be done to the mm-hmm. glory of God or not to the glory of God. And, you know, we have, for example, on our ballot here in Florida, we have, we have a, a, an amendment about hunting and fishing, for example, yeah. and somebody used that as an example well, that, you know, there's no biblical kind of theological and the very first thing I thought of was there absolutely is <laughs> go back to Genesis, Genesis Genesis 1 tells one, us it. to have dominion over the earth and to be thoughtful about it now they're both both no matter which way you vote yes or no on that you might be able to back that up theologically right but don't say that it's not theological right right that's, yeah, that's yeah. the thing and and my 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 hackles get really like up when I hear people say, "Well, this is not a this is not a biblical issue, and this is not a scriptural issue, and this is not," I'm like, "No, no, all of it is." Yeah. yeah. Now, some of it, sometimes it's it's more obvious. There's a good and a bad choice. Yeah. And sometimes it's situationally good, and sometimes you know both both situations might be good, right? But especially, you know, when you talk about like the 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 economic uh, issues that we face in the country, right? Jesus had more to say about 
money and economics than almost any other topic, except for maybe the kingdom of God, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. As we talked about this week. So the, I, I just think that there's it's, it's easy for both sides, and I'll say this, it's easy for both sides of the aisle to proof text and say, well, this is the important yeah. issue and this is not an important issue. And, and these are the ones that we address and these are the ones that we don't address, like you just said. But that there we really have to be thoughtful about those things. And, and, and I think it's important to, to, to know that um, I, I mentioned this at the session meeting. I said when the, when the, the, the committee that, that it is a resource for this session on any of these issues, uh, the Church and Culture Committee, we, the very first meeting we had for the, for the committee, we said, what are the possible list of things that we could talk about? And it was a mile long oh, all, because of the very thing you're, you're saying, because it, it, it is biblical. Everything is biblical. Everything, everything has to do with what God has revealed to us through, through Scripture. And then there's so many, and they, they weren't all controversial issues. They're just, they're just some, some key theological things. I mean, it's Reformation Sunday. Well, what is the Reformation? What is reg- regeneration? What is the, the whole order salutis ought to be definitions, you know, in, yeah. in, 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 as a work of our, of our session. But What's important to know is that we may not say something about everything. Everything. Yeah. We certainly won't say something about everything all the time. Yeah. You know, we may pick and choose. Well, we, we we must pick and choose. We must pick and choose if and if we're going to say something. Just because what was the critical crit, critical race theory was a yeah. big buzz. You know, three four years four years yeah. ago, everybody was just just up in arms about up it. in arms about critical race theory. Well, we chose not to have a an official response to that. Yeah. We could have. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's no, no crime yeah. in the. In fact, the, the the church has been the church has had the equivalent of an official response. Yeah, forever. I mean, but that, but that, even there, I mean, just I don't mean to stop you, but even there, I heard you preach, and I did preach many times during that season about things like equality and racial uh, equity, and, and we didn't just we just didn't use the term critical race theory yeah. because we knew as soon as we did that, yeah, we were, we were, we were lighting a match and throwing it on the gasoline. Certain terms will, will, it, are, are just not worth using. But from a biblical standpoint, you preached on it. I preached yeah. on it. Yeah. It just, for whatever reason, people didn't hear that as like, oh, well, that's not the same. Pastor yeah. John is getting poli- political. Pastor Zach getting political. I was like, no, no, no. We're we're looking at the, but there for whatever reason. Well, I know what the reason is, and and we both addressed it in our sermons this week. The idea is that there are certain issues that have been co opted by the political side of things, and even though they're very biblical, biblically warranted uh, uh, stances to have. Yeah. For what for for the re, for, you know for a lot of the reasons about this kingdom battle that we're in, yeah, we, the kingdom of this world. You, yeah. you spoke about that often in, yeah. in, in your message. But I just uh, the idea that the church would speak to contemporary issues of the day, or, or the idea that the church shouldn't speak to contemporary issues of the day, is to ignore the church's role in ending the persecutions. Yeah. Is to speak to the church's role in ending the um, the, the the crusades, yeah. the church's role, and I mean all the way up to pick any issue: women, women's uh, rights, uh, mm-hmm. civil rights civil movements, rights movement, uh, yeah. you know, the, the the abolition of slavery. Yeah, guess who? Yes, Christians were the ones doing it. Yeah, and uh, but yes, Christians were the ones who were, who, who made it stop. Yeah. So yeah. so how did that happen? Because yeah. Christians had, had a had a political political. They stood up to the political forces, so and, yeah. you know, it, it, it works just, just because it doesn't go our way on any particular issue doesn't mean it shouldn't be done. Can I ask you, just this is just a personal question with this, like, when you have, like, great moments of celebration, like we had this weekend, costumes yeah. and candy, Kirk and the Tartans, yeah. does it frustrate you at all that sometimes those things get kind of the rug gets pulled out under the celebration of those things sure, a little bit because sure. of that. Yeah, sure. Because, you know, because, and, and not saying it wasn't necessary, I'm not saying it wasn't like, uh, you know, th- because would the I, timing would is I, the would timing, would, right? Yeah, would I have loved ha- to have this done three weeks ago or three weeks from now? Yeah. Uh, of course. I mean, yeah. I'd rather not have that uh, over this weekend, yes. Yeah. Over yeah. the Costumes of Candy, huge event, over this over the big, big weekend, huge event, Would I, I would much rather have had it some other time. Yeah. But, yeah, it is what it the is, timing right? is, is what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it, yeah, I mean, we even talked about last at the session meeting should we wait a week you know yeah yeah but the, but the idea is like well that's like two days before the election and people and, and i don't know about you i've seen a lot more people have pre-voted i've never yeah. seen this many people pre-vote 
Did you guys pre-vote? Yeah. See, I, I, I always go the day of. I don't know yeah. why. I, 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 this is one of those things. I'm a tech guy, right? But this is one of those things I'm like a Luddite. I want to do it in person. I'm a Luddite. <laughs> um, even if it's like a four-hour line or whatever, I just, you know, bring it. It's just, that's, I, what I, I, that's what I avoid. I want to avoid the lines. Yeah. See, and Julie's talking about the pre-voting and stuff. I'm just like, I don't know. There's something about the day of. I, I don't know. I, it's a weird thing in my head. I, I don't. I don't get it. But anyway, we're gonna take a short break, and then we get back. We're gonna talk about something way bigger. Yes. The kingdom of God. So we'll, we'll be back in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody. We are in the second week in our series in the Lord's Prayer. And, uh, you know, this is, as I kind of made a joke in the sermon, you know, this is a small topic, the kingdom of God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> when you said that, I thought about, uh, I preached a sermon as a student pastor in Scotland, and it was on the kingdom of God. Just a tiny little. And and my my supervisor said, uh, you know, he's a very Scottish, former RAF uh, yeah. guy. says, well, John, is a very good, that was a very good six sermons That's you right. preached. <laughs> so well, I, tried he, to get, I tried to get it all in at once. We actually did a series uh, about six years ago, five years ago, on the kingdom and community. And just did, we, it was six weeks on the kingdom and the community. Yeah. And, and uh, some people who were here back then might have noticed a few of my points from that sermon were, were in this sermon. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, Ed, Ed Dyes joked with me right before the message. He's like, yeah, I, I had somebody when he was guest preaching, say to him, oh, yeah, just preach on the kingdom of God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, it, you know. It, I love how you said it was hard to define. I, I thought that was really uh, helpful because it was part of my, 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 my doctoral dissertation was, uh, I call it the intersection between kingdom theology, generational sociology, and process evangelism yeah. in a single church. So, so I, which, Small means, topic. which means you got to, you got to, you got to summarize kingdom Theology. Yeah. yeah. Well, kingdom theology is a bit hard to define. Well, and, and, and it was interesting because you and I went to the Old Testament. We went to two different parts of the Old Testament, mm -hmm. which, again, this is why we have two different sermons, because you could get creation-level kingdom, and you could get kingdom, you know, the Old Testament Isra Israelite uh Judite kingdom idea right. there built in, and, and you can see that that's been God's program from the beginning and how it plays out. I mean, you could, we could have jumped into almost any passage in the Old Testament yeah. and found, and, and not, wouldn't have to dig very hard yeah. to find. I mean, even like someone said, ask, ask some, some uh, at one point when we were doing the kingdom and community, well, because I think in that sermon series, you know, we, we said something like the Old Testament is all about the kingdom. And someone said, "Well, how is the how is the book of Ruth, for example, about the kingdom?" I said, "Well, did you read the end? Ruth is the matriarch of King David, and yeah, it makes yeah. a pretty big point about yeah, that, yeah. and how that like some of the foundations of the greatest Old Testament king, right there, yeah. comes from a Moabite widow, you know, and that like." So even in that story is is that you know there's this kingdom deal. So how are you? It was a challenge, right, to to kind of narrow the field. Yeah. What was it about the the Jehoshaphat kind of from from Chronicles that was really like jumped off the page? Uh, I, I, and again, I I had I had my my chapter on kingdom rumbling through my head as yeah. well. So I, I I already had this movement of the of the of the uh, and I wanted to make the move from the Old Testament. To the concept new. of kingdom to the New Testament concept of kingdom, even though the Old Testament concept of kingdom doesn't use the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven type of language no. per se. It just talks about the God is sovereign over all the kingdoms, kingdoms of the nation, which is what Jehoshaphat yeah. was praying in his in his prayer. But I so I wanted to start there and say that this concept was out was out in the in the Jewish people among the Jewish people. They had the idea that God is 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 a king over all all the nations. But something began to shift, and so that that was probably the, the one difference that I that I uh, 
that I, uh, be, between ours because I felt very I felt we were doing the same having the same message basically. I was yeah. looking at my notes from yeah. your, your sermons is that it's just that contrast between the kingdom of this world and the con- contrast of the kingdom that is that is Jesus ushers in. And the one thing that I brought into that that was uh, that was different, but I, again I'm I'm tracking through my your, my my, your favor, my, yeah. my chapter is that. There began to rise up in Judaism this idea that something new is going to happen the yeah. way, with the way God works in this world. Some yeah. some new reign is going to come into this come into this world, and that was the whole messianic yeah. anointed deliverer uh, that, that was fulfilled in Jesus. Yeah. Which I, I mentioned Christmas. You mentioned Christmas as yeah. well. So we both said, and we see it happening yeah. in everything that the kingdom was was about in the Old Testament was fulfilled in in, in Jesus. And I just added the uh, the other piece, and there yeah, was a, you there went was to a, eschatological. There's a here, feet, the, the yeah. here, and not yet. Um, yeah, the, the already and not yet, which yeah. I was in. You know, I, again, this the idea of the kingdom. There's a lot of different kind of angles angles that you can take. Yeah. And I had in my initial notes this 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 because I and again, that's why I appreciate that we have two messages because the people that ask the question, well, if the kingdom has already arrived, like what, what, what does that mean for us now? And I had in my initial notes, this, the ICC, the reformed concept of inauguration, continuation and consummation that in the advent of Jesus in his life, death and resurrection, his ministry, he inaugurates the, which is, it's a kind of an the interesting kingdom term, realities. the kingdom realities on earth. So yeah. he, he's living into the very prayer he's asking us to pray. He's, he's inaugurating that, but we're in the continuation period of the expanse of that, which if you go to like the John, you know, the, the high priestly prayer yeah. in John 15, 16, 17, there's actually a lot of that sort of mission language, that missional language. It's not it's not our mission. You know, we talk about what's the mission yeah. of FPC. It's not our mission. It's the mission of Jesus that we're continuing. Yeah. The making and maturing disciples is a kingdom mission. And then it's consummated. And you you talked about the the not yet side. It's it's yet to come, yeah. the eschatological reality. So it, we we both talked about the inauguration and the and then one and the, other and, the and one now. other thing. Yeah. And I talked about it in the continuation, and you talked about it more in the consummation, yeah. and then then went back into the continuation piece. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Can, I think people can tell how how much we have thought about <laughs> yeah. the kingdom theology. But it was interesting that you that we we both wanted to say that what. The the, the the idea which is which is which is true we both said it you preached it from the kingdom and community you know six years ago uh that that the uh, jesus brought brought in this community and there's and that was his main work the gospels are the main work of, of jesus is not i love that you actually said almost the exact same thing i that know jesus it, talked more about the kingdom than he talked it, about the cross yeah and, and as and, important as the cross is and we and we want to really i mean it is every and every easter is so such a big celebration but he taught more about that there's more real estate for that than there is for, for the for the cross but don't you think it's and I'll just pause you there for a second. Don't you think it's it's important for people to understand that the cross and the empty tomb is about the kingdom to, to ma- help them understand that the big because I think this is the the antidote to the personal the the personal salvation narrative that has dominated Western Christianity Last 100 years, yeah. maybe 80 years or so. And, and it's not that personal salvation is unimportant, but it's part of something so much bigger. And yeah. I think that to me, I remember when I first heard about kingdom theology, I didn't hear about it till seminary. I never heard of kingdom theology yeah. before. I mean, come from a Wesleyan Arminian background, so which is very much about personal kind of you know, uh, experiential kind of relationship with, with Christ, which is important. But when I understood that my personal relationship with Christ is actually set, it's, it's a, it's a, a, it's a drop in the ocean of the kingdom of God. I was like, my mind just was like, what, (laughs) but actually made it more to me. He was like, Oh, well that makes it smaller. But for me, it's actually the opposite makes, makes your personal salvation and my personal salvation much more important. It it's, it reminds me of the um, the definition that I um, which we'll probably do in, with, at session at some point to make a definition of what do we mean by evangelism and the one that I like I really like is that evangelism we always think that it's sort of getting a notch on your on your on your pistol or something yeah, in your belt, belt. belt where like I got I got another one into heaven now it's really an invitation into the life of discipleship yeah so it's connected it's yeah it's a thing in the moment but it's connected to this larger thing so yeah. my personal salvation is a is a Reality is important, whatnot, but it's 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 me now choosing to. This is mm, 
this is the I, if anything is the the thing about kingdom is that we are now part of yeah. we are coming under the rule rule of a life lived with a sovereign king yeah absolutely that, that's so so and we, how do, and and how, we how see do, our we see yeah. our lives that way we see our lives as being under the authority under the under the leadership under the kingship of Jesus. We don't see our, our lives as living as autonomous, independent individuals. Absolutely. We are part of this. We are now part of this realm. We yeah. are now part of this kingdom. Absolutely. That's that's a huge thing. And I love that the, and we both said it, that there's the, 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 the miracles were signs. Yes. Say, okay, these are the validations that there is a kingdom here. The parables, you talked about the parables. Mm-hmm. I talked about the parables. Uh, the parables are, are teachings to tell us about the, the, uh, the kingdom. Gosh, even the, um, you know the, the the gospels have a lot of the kingdom of heaven is valuable here yeah. all the parables about the lost coin and you know you uh, seek it seek it seek it it's seek it, seek so it, valuable right? sell everything yeah. you've got to, to get it you just don't realize how incredibly important this is and um and so jesus so, so the whole point of all this the reason why you and i are saying all this is that what does jesus after he says that god's name would be made holy yeah he said okay here's the next way you pray yeah pray for that kingdom yeah to be fully a reality in this world and it's and, and everybody to get what we were just talking about. Everybody to understand that they are living under the rule of God. Why do you think it is? Because of all that we just said. Why do you think it is? Because I I've been wrestling with this, and I I didn't I I I I didn't address it directly because I hadn't come, and I I've I've wrestled with this so much in in my Bible teaching and the receptivity of people to this concept of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Why do you think so many parishioners? congregants who have studied the Bible longer than you and I've been alive, some of them, gloss over this idea of the kingdom, because it is in the parables, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is like, or it might be compared to over, but then they jump over that to the parable itself. Uh, we pray the, the Lord's prayer, your kingdom come. They, they jump over that to the, your will be done and maybe give it, you know, then give us this day. Or, I mean, mm-hmm. why do you think and I, I genuinely, I, I, I don't have a great, I mean, I have a, I have a theory, but it's not, why do you think we just plow through the kingdom concepts and just, we, per, and maybe I'm, maybe I, I'm answering I, my own question. I suspect a lot of it has to do with uh, something that is concrete versus something that's more abstract. Yeah. Even though it, it is concrete, the, the kingdom living has c- concrete lived realities that we when we think about something we frame something biblically or you know, th- through the lens of the this world is god's it, you know, psalm 24 uh, the, the world and all is in it belongs to god i think that's there there's some concrete specific things that it means but i but for the most part it, it hits like it is more abstract and it is less of like personal salvation you know, yeah. to sharing the sharing the the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, so personal evangelism. That's very specific. I, mm-hmm. I it's something I know what to do yeah. to 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 understand myself as living under this reign of God on this on this earth. Here, all right. What what do I people? I think people are like. What do I do with that? Yeah, you know, I, and I also I think some to some extent, and, and I think we both mentioned this. You, you kind of mentioned this at the, towards the end of your message, but. I wonder if the concept, the concept of kingdom is is deeply un-American. <laughs> yeah, we don't have kings. Deeply un-American. We don't know what to do with monarchs. I mean, if you read the founding fathers' documents, I mean, they are so anti the word sure. king. I mean, they wanted to make George, George Washington, Washington king, a king, and yeah. he was so no, I'm not going to be the king, because there's this con- is all built up with this you know hereditary privilege and all that. I, but I also think it has something to do with this idea of we don't – you just talked about it. We're not autonomous. We're not uh, self-actualizing. It, to, to say that I am a follower of Jesus Christ is to put yourself under the authority of a king. Yeah. To submit. And we – in the last in the last sermon series, and I was – And it's to submit in community, which yeah. is another – Which is su- another su- Submitting issue. is one thing, yeah. and then the, the rugged indiv- American individualism – is what we're known for, yeah. And to say that we are dependent upon and interdependent upon community, and that community beginning with community with God, it, you know, it starts to sound like like 
things that we don't want to talk about. Like it's it, people's like, well, that's, you know, in community means we, you know, like if you look at the acts two and the acts, you know, yeah. uh, eight and, and some of those, it starts to look a lot more like things we don't want to address sure. politically. Yeah. Well, we're know? no, and we're, we're, because we're nowhere close to that, we could move in that direction and be just fine. Yeah. We're not even, yeah. Cause we're so far away <laughs> yeah. from it. And let's, because, just, let's just do, let's just do small groups. Yeah. Let's do small groups and let's, you know, Let, let's, let's maybe, everybody plug into a small group and maybe, care for people that are in the small groups who have yeah. needs, you know, it's like the, the, and, and take some sense of ownership of the, of the social woes of yeah. our, of the, the various people we've been talking about, the women who, who are desperate, the women yeah. who have deadbeat, you know, husbands and, you know, yeah. women who have no health care, health care. Let's take some sense of ownership for that. We can move in, we can move in that direction and be nowhere near, nowhere near socialism, it. communism, all the things that people, people get, fear. Get, oh yeah. They get, they get so scared about going there. They don't yeah. even take steps towards caring for people. Yeah. So, well, no, no, it's just about, and I think, so I think that there's something about when we start, it, it's almost like, you know, Josh mentioned in his message last week about the concept of father being difficult for pe- some people. Right. And and I unpacked that in my small group on uh, it's my small group in the parent group on Sunday, on Wednesday, the concept of father and what mm-hmm. does that look like? And, and, and there, there are people that have real wounds about that. Yeah. And, and it's funny because there are people who don't have wounds about that, but even the good fathers still painted their picture of God in a very, um, linear monochromatic sort of way do you know what i'm saying yeah. like um well and, and you 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 mentioned it somebody somebody laughed in uh, in a comic way in in your sermon about that they're they're flawed these fathers of ours are flawed people yeah if there's a it was a new person first time or something, it was a, i need to call her out but i was like wow that was that was a that was the la- the laughter version of an amen, I guess. Right, <laughs> yeah. but it was it was. I think I think the kingdom thing is it does. You know, it's why it's so important that we go and revisit that for people, and and because it is difficult for people to to wrap their hearts and it's minds. It's the around. framework of our life. Yeah, it is the framework in which we live our life. Yeah, which is a very different thing than saying go do this, go pray this, go act. You know. It's it's you live in this framework yeah. where Jesus is the is is leader and God's rule matters. Uh, by and the way, I, w- I want to ask about this because yeah. I, I want to get to this because you you you, uh, you you came to this several times and I loved it. Um, yeah, you created this contrast between the um, you know the, the 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 kingdom of God and the prince of this world or the yeah. the effect the the force that is at work in this world. I think you said it at one yeah. point. So. Uh, I, how did you get get to that that place? Because I thought it was very helpful. Yeah. If Jesus is going to say pray for this, to say he's praying for something different, basically yeah. to pray for something different than other other than what we're living here. Yeah. How, how did you? Well, and, and and I think you you know you you put a lot of uh, headlines to that concept. I mean, you, you talked about the war in Gaza. You talked about all these different things about as the evidence that there's another power and force at work, yeah. right? And so to me, I. You know, I, I, we've talked about kind of what drives our our process and what drives the the movement through a sermon, right? Because there is a movement through a sermon, and one of the movements that I that I always come up, especially since this is not a series on the kingdom, it's a one off on the kingdom. Now, I think we're going to revisit the concept when we talk about the will of God, which is the very next petition, right? Because yeah, the, you can't get... The, the concepts that are being prayed for are similar. Yes. What's in heaven comes on earth. What's in heaven in, in terms of your rule comes to earth. What's in heaven in terms of your will also comes to earth. Yes. And and the, 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 the will of God and the kingdom of God are a handshake when it comes to heaven and earth, right? Mm -hmm. So my, my, there was a, there's this lingering question that people will ask and say, well, you know, how is the, how is it like a king? How is there a kingdom of brokenness and sin and all this? You know, what is that? And it's a very confusing concept, right? Because it's like, well, if Jesus is the king and he's the established king and he is the ruler over all the earth, then why? Yeah, why? his kingdom looks terrible. Look, yeah. at, look at all the problems we have. Here. Yeah. And so, so, so it's really explaining the, the problem of e- e- reality of evil and suffering is and what the, you're. And so why is there evil and suffering yeah. when the kingdom is supposed to be here? 
And there is a there is a competing kingdom. I mean, in the language that Paul uses, and it's not just in Ephesians two. It's in, he also uses the same language in in Romans. He uses the same language in to the Corinthian church. It is also a kingdom. You know, when 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 he when he talks about uh, we do not wrestle against you know we don't battle against flesh and mm-hmm. blood. He uses the terms rulers and principalities, right? And those are that's kingdom language. So there's this, and it, it, it is is built like this cosmic war. And I'm not, I'm a very, you know, grounded kind of individual. You know, I, 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 I get hesitant about overusing the, the, the high spiritual Mo- language. Mostly because we see what other people do with it and they go yeah. over the, over the top with it and take yes. it further than, and then it, it needs than to it go. needs to go. Yeah. And, but it's there in yeah. the scripture, and so you can't deny that there is a spiritual battle that is at play all the time, and it and it's and it's happening at a global scale, but it's also happening at a personal scale, and that's part of what I and and the the idea and I this is cutting room floor man this is why this is where it gets frustrating sometimes when you're preaching because you're like well what does the prince of the power of the air mean you know back yeah, in the, yeah. back in the I read an article. I think I can't remember who what it was, but there was a there was a movement in the 1920s, a Christian movement on the 1920s, that basically said you can't preach over the radio, you can't preach over the radio because that's the airwaves and Satan has dominion over the airwaves. I'm not like this. Is, I, I, I yeah, read that. I was like, is that, that a joke? And I looked it up. No, no, there were actual people who thought. And but we the same concept happened when when the internet came out. You can't have you know that that's that that's that's, that's the Satan, dominion Satan's of Satan. dominion. Yeah, that's Satan's dominion, and and the same thing happens when rock music. You know, that's the devil's God. That's not how it works, guys. I mean, that's yeah. just not how it works. Yeah. But what it does mean is that the influence of Satan, the influence of evil is so prevalent that the battle does not just happen in the heavenly realms. As Jesus points out in this prayer, it happens on earth. It happens in your home. It happens in your heart. It happens in the classroom. It happens when we go to vote. It happen- it, It's there. And the question is, what kingdom are we living into, right? And you said that very well at the end of your message. That's the point I was trying to get to is when we pray your kingdom come, it is a prayer that has global uh, community and personal implications. Mm-hmm. And we've got to, we're, we're praying to be changed so that we can also be ex- 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 exhibitors of that kingdom out in the world. So I don't know if it played that way, but that, that was but, the idea well, there well, for me. What I love about it is that, is that when Jesus, I mean, again, the, Jesus teaches how to pray, or Jesus is talking about prayer in, in, in the context of the yeah. Sermon on the Mount. And he says, okay, first thing you want to do is you want to pray that God would make his own name, Father make his own name holy. Yeah. Second thing you want to do, pray that the kingdom as it exists yeah. uh, in contrast to the, in, your, in this case, in contrast to the, to the kingdom of this world, that the kingdom of God would be just everywhere. Yeah. And so really, to me, to me, this is one of the interesting things. We have, and I've, I started to unpack it a little bit in the, in the live services. And I hope I'll do more of this in the in the weeks ahead. Is that one of the really interesting things? Is that why? Yeah. And why was it? Why you know? Why not start with give us this day? Or day? Why not start with the personal needs yeah. and then move up to the to the needs? But he says no. Start here. Yeah. And then go. Then go kingdom. Everything about the kingdom. Let Lord let that be reality. Do you find it challenging in a in a series like this? I, I, I curious because we both did this a little bit but i wonder if you had the inclination like i did to do a little bit more but then you're like no no no, we got to let the weeks be somewhat separate do you do you find it challenging not to re-preach everything you just preached on the 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 like the 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 holy the holiness of the name of god you know just to make sure you understand people understand the kingdom i mean because you mentioned it i did too there was there is it challenging for you to not say okay well let's go back and unpack every you know take twenty more minutes on that I, I find it challenging not yeah, to go back yeah. I know you spent a good know. bit of time yeah. a good bit of time on that on this weekend so my my yes uh, and but I when I'm preaching especially in classic I, I hear the clock ticking really loudly in my ears yeah. and so especially when I got baptism and other yeah. you know, other things going going on and uh, and actually uh, and Nikki who's our liturgist uh, she actually 
missed. I don't want. I haven't even talked to her about this. She actually missed the prayers of the people in the worship guide itself. So it would have been even more yeah. had they been. So I hear that clock ticking. So I said, I can't do it. So yeah. all I. Uh, so yes, yeah. I do have. I do have a desire to go back and. To do re, more re, on it, right? Just re, do more to bring people up to the who speed, weren't there, yeah. up to where we are. Where we are. In lieu of that, though, I just say first week was blah 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 two sentences, and then I go move on. And this series does require some of that, right? Because it is a building series. Yes. Uh, we, we, I think one of the things that you mentioned a lot in your sermon last week, which I think it was really important for people to hear, is that these petition, these six petitions, are not like bullet points that have nothing to do with what has previously been said. Yeah. They they all build. I mean, even when we get to the personal petitions of give us this day our daily bread, that relates to the will of God, that relates to the kingdom on earth, that relates to the holy name of God, and it relates to him as our father. All of that is in there too, right? So it does matter. It, unlike some series where it is more topical and... Yeah, you want, you, you want you, one off series. Yeah, and, and, yeah. You it, can mention that we're in a series on anxiety, for example, and we can unpack some of the little things, but you could do that in 30 seconds. Yeah. No, you're right. This, this, this one really matters. This, yeah. this, this, this matters. Yeah. So we're going to take a short break. Uh, we'll get back and we will talk about uh, what you could do with this in your devotional life and your uh, group life together. So uh, we'll be back in just a moment. we're back and as we have been doing the last uh several weeks we close out the the episode with you know what do you do with this devotionally what do you do with this in group study because uh like we said kingdom of god is a gigantic concept and it comes on the heels of the holy name of god which is also a gigantic concept so how would you direct groups or individuals to kind of process this this message yeah. uh, together well first off uh, hopefully you if you've been using this for individual devotions or for um for group devotions let us know how how this is going because oh, yeah, this is that. a new addition to this podcast yeah. so just let us know what and you, my, you my own group my own my own parenting group we've been we've been uh We've been doing that too because we had people that say, "Well, why don't we just you know go through the go through the sermon, go yeah, through some, some of the sermons too?" Yeah. So, um, so one of the questions that I would uh, ask, and and somebody had asked, did ask, so I've got some notes from yeah. that I already sent out to somebody. So, somebody uh, does has a group on Sunday night. And yeah, so, so we, we to... sent some notes out ahead of time, so uh, to, at least to them, your kingdom come is a call to make this make this earth have more and more look more like more like the rule of God as it is in heaven. Yeah. And so, what is that? What is that? What, yeah. what would you, you? Your contrast was the kingdom of, of, of heaven versus the kingdom of this world. What exactly does, does the kingdom of heaven have, or not have, that is different than what the kingdom of this world uh, has? Yeah. And um, what would it actually look like to have more of what whatever that is in in this world? So yeah. just spend some time talking about that. Okay. What is what? What does the kingdom of heaven have? Yeah. What is go, what is God's role in that king, in the kingdom of heaven? What will we be doing in, the, in that kingdom of heaven? And if I would encourage and I would challenge people, it's very easy to sit on the the global scale and like the the community scale and not go to the heart scale, the personal scale. I would I would encourage groups to reverse that because you 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 and I both know you start people want to start talking like how bad the country is. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have nothing but that talk, which is not. Not to say that's not important, but start with your own household. Start with your own soul. Like, where, what would it look like for the kingdom of heaven to have more of a rule in your home versus what are the, what, and this is the tougher one. And this is where the confession part comes in. Because what is, what is the, what is the content of Jesus' sermons? It's not just the kingdom of heaven, it's repent. <laughs> Yeah, because the yeah, kingdom of heaven yeah, is near. Yeah. So what Which it, means there's, there's something to repent from. There's something to repent from that is anti the kingdom of heaven. This is something that didn't get into the message. Yeah. The, that connection point is didn't get into the message. But I would, you know, start personal with that question. I think and, it was G.K. Chesterton that said, uh, was asked the question of what's, what, what is the fundamental problem? What's, what's fundamentally wrong about this world? And his answer was, me. I am okay. what's wrong with this world. That it's it, that. It's very personal. That yeah, it is because if it, it and it's the it goes from that, which is such a profound statement, to the cliche one little spark kind of thing. It takes one little spark, right? But it 
it is true. It starts with us. It starts with what yeah. we what we bring to the table, and what we advocate for. You know, I it, I would ask people to if they have a, an issue with the concept of kingdom or what is, you know, mm. do they have like this kind of more existential kind of, uh, I wish they would use a different word besides kingdom. We use yeah. that word because the word kingdom is there. We just yeah. can't avoid it. And yeah. there's no other good way to, government doesn't work. I mean, government does pop up in the in the Old Testament. I mean, even in the Isaiah 9, you know, messianic, the government will be on his shoulders. That's the ordering of things, but the kingdom concept is more than just about order. Reign, yeah. reign and rule. Yeah. R U L E. Those are the two words that have been uh, to, to me they're the best substitute words if kingdom is it throws you off. But kingdom, it, I like kingdom because it's just so much more poetic, right? Yeah. I mean, it's just, and the, the, I liked, I mean, I, and I talked about my, my personal connection with the concept yeah, of got monarchy. English, yeah. I've got my English heritage and, and, uh, I mean, heck, the whole Kirkin of the Tartans is about the, the about the, the Scottish, Scottish heritage, heritage yeah. but that, you know, that, that there is this idea of rule and dominions and things like that. And, uh, but it's, it's, there are people that really do have a fundamentally difficult time. So I'd, I'd unpack yeah. that. You know, what does it mean to have a kingdom? You know, I would, I would, uh, to, to, to pick up on what's, what's wrong. And, uh, I actually, it was interesting on Sunday morning between services, my sister texted me. Yeah. And cause I said, you know, we, we, we see all the good and glorious things in this world. We love the good, good and glorious things in this world, but we also know something is wrong. Yeah. And she texted me and said, Mom used to say that all the time, and yeah. I'd forgotten about that. Mm. My mother used to say, something's wrong with this world. Yeah. And she'd tell you whatever she thought was wrong with this world. Uh, I think that would be a, a, a good thing to spend some time thinking about. You know, we know all the things that are right with this world and things that make this world worth living, mm -hmm. this life worth living. But what are those things that you see as individuals, what you see are, are the, the really the fundamental core problems in this world these are these are the things that really make life um burdensome for some or just difficult and then follow that i guess maybe to pick up on what you were saying follow that with what's our responsibility with 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 any of those things on that list what is our responsibility with any of those things yeah because i think too often the response is hand-wringing and and railing as opposed yeah. to saying well let's 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 pick up a hammer and and nail yeah. it's like you know it's it's why the book of james is so important <laughs> yeah he 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 gets practical <laughs> you know and and i i get luther called it the gospel of straw but honestly to me it's the gospel of brick right because it it takes the gospel and says mm -hmm. yes the goodness and the grace of God is amazing, and it's shown to us in Jesus, but it doesn't leave us indifferent just basking in that goodness. Yeah. We should take time. Talked about it last week. I think Josh did a great job of unpacking this idea of basking before the greatness and the majesty of God. That's why the Lord's Prayer is so important, because it does give us that balance between basking in the holiness of God and how that how that reign and rule is amazing and it's humbling and it's awesome. But it brings us to a point of action. And that action has to go and, and and if it doesn't bring us to a point of action, we have to ask ourselves some hard questions. Absolutely. About the do, about the do, state do of we, our own do hearts. We, yeah, do we mean it? You know. <laughs> this is that whole faith and works tension that was yeah. uh, this talked about quite a bit that, that Paul talks about faith without Works, works is, is dead. Is, is dead. Yeah. Um, but um, and, J and James says, or uh, James talks about that, and yeah. Paul, Paul says, Paul, yeah. you got to you got to do some work. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Paul. That's the thing. I think people always put James and Paul at odds, and they're really not. I mean, the, the just that the evidence of a faith is a, is yes. how I've always thought of it. Well, the we talked about the, the fruit works. of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit from Galatians is about seeing evidence of the seed of the gospel taking yeah. root and flourishing in your life, right? Well, that's be, that would actually be a question that I would maybe throw, throw out again on the personal side, is like, what would it look like in an individual life, your life, what would it look like in your life if you were more and more living into this kingdom life? Because it's gonna, you're going to have to get concrete with it. You're yeah. going to have to get to those very James-like things. You're going to get to some work-like things. And you're going to know that you, those works are not the, the those works are they come out of this awareness that you are coming under the the, the rule of God and the reign of God. Uh, you, because of that, you're going to be living a certain way. But what what specifically would would look differently? When would you go? Would you go 
would you mention LVIM? Would you be on LVI? Serve LVIM, serve Lakeland, meals. Lakeland Volunteers in Medicine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so what, what what specific things would would be likely to change? Yeah, and I and we we talk about the big three areas of life. I would just take those big those areas and say, how would the rule and the reign and the kingdom of God affect how I spend my time? Look at like I mean we talk about great get, get your calendar out and say okay how much of my time is spent in service to the kingdom of God and and that's not to say that things like because some people take it to the extreme well you can't have any recreation I mean there some of the Puritans had this concept you can't have any recreation vacations are evil da 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 I don't believe that there are times where part of the kingdom of God mentality is you got to take a break Jesus broke away to pray yeah. spent time alone that that's perfectly fine. Does it go to excess though? I mean that yeah. you have to balance that. Does it go to excess? How do you you know, how do you spend your money? You know, is it in that again, that doesn't mean you can't spend money on yourself and comfortable things and items, but where does it go to excess where you're not serving the kingdom of God any longer? You're not good, good point. and then your energy, right? Th- those three areas, it doesn't get any simpler than that. Not simplistic, but simple because you can go through those areas and say, the kingdom of God has, what percentage would you say the kingdom of God has yeah, in your life? Yeah. No, and how are a, you going to move it's towards just a, 100%? In the, in, the, in the recovery circles, they talk about doing a sweeping, sweeping and fearless moral oh, in, inventory. Yeah. And this is, in a way, it's doing a sweeping and fearless um, um, inventory of, the king, of, of, kingdom of your kingdom living, yeah. of how, how well am I living that's into a, the kingdom. Great, it would be great, I mean, if we had some sort of a tool, and I'm sure there probably is something that we could say, take the percentage, and you talk about this in in the new member class. What is discipleship? Discipleship is not going from zero to perfection. It's going from zero to one to one. Yeah. One, to, it's taking the next yeah. step. You could you can, it's progressive. It's, it's, yeah. it's iterative. It's it, it's yeah. lived out and in, in, in incremental growth. And you can frame that in kingdom terms. You could say, what percentage of the kingdom of God has rule over my finances? What percentage of the kingdom of God has rule? O-? And that do- does not mean you're shooting to tithe 99% and live on the one. There are some people that do that. I've heard uh, the founder of Walmart, Sam Walton, that was his mm-hmm. goal. You know, uh, one of the great pastors of the last century, Rick Warren. I mean, he tithed he reverse 90, tither. he yeah. reversed tithe. Maybe that's your goal, but maybe your goal is to say, well, I'm just going to be more, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get to that, that tithing level of 10% and then I'm going to find where I can go above and beyond in other areas. We, you mentioned Lakeland Volunteers in Medicine. Uh, there are, are so many charitable organizations that you can go above and beyond financially. Or it might just be saying, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have uh, a, a reserve uh, of, of savings that I just, as I hear of needs, I'm going to just anonymously not let the right hand know what the left hand's yeah. doing. I'm going to provide for those needs. You know, I've got people as, ever, a, as a facilitator of some of those from time to time. Those are pretty fun. Those, don't, 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 yes. They come to us. Don't let anyone know. But here's where I want this to be directed. Yes. And we get every Christmas, I get emails from people. Do you know a family? I'm like, do I know ten families? That's <laughs> yeah, the, yes, I the do. Question. Yes, and and so look at that with your time. Look and, at that. and and I mean, I, I know we're talking about this. Some of the local, yeah, local uh, uh, partners. But how about in the church? Yeah. Absolutely. Serving, serving in the church as well. Where can you serve in the church? Yeah, that, so and that's that that's time, your time. That's the time commitment, and 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 the energy. You know, how much energy do you spend? You know, I'm going to just do a confession moment right now. I've had to stop almost entirely, not entirely, but almost entirely watching college football because it's taking too much of my energy <laughs> in my heart, and and uh, it has nothing to do with the fact that my team is two losses deep right now. Normally, they're, they're a zero <laughs> yeah. losses deep. Yeah, I, but I, it, but it does I, have it does have a lot to do with my mental state on Sunday morning and and my energy on Sunday morning. And you talk about the eight o'clock uh, kickoff. I just I just am not doing it. I, I yeah. do right now. I just had to because I saw. This is this sounds like this sounds so stupid, but it it really I was analyzed doing that moral inventory, doing that kingdom inventory, and going, this is not good for my soul. <laughs> I really right now it's not good for my soul. So I wake up in the morning, I'm a lot more fresh on Sunday morning because I'm like, 
I'm just not staying up, right? Yeah. I'm just not going to do it. And, and uh, I'm with you. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's just the company. I mean, I've turned I've turned the games off. Those nighttime games off at halftime. Yeah, yeah. Watch, and, and watch whatever, half a- whatever the highlights are the next. And I, I just you know it's because it's and it sounds like such a dumb thing, but it does take up a lot of mental and emotional and that bleeds into spiritual energy. And I just said, you know, yeah. this is not right now not good for me. Part of that energy too, that I would say is is how much does it matter to you? Yeah. How much of your your sort of thought world goes towards my place in the church in the in 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 the church being this sort of place where we are we're we're living out our kingdom life. Yeah. You know, so how much does it even matter? Yeah. Cuz that it the the lack of thinking about it is pretty pervasive as well. I got I got a busy life and I really just too busy for for that, so it's not that big a deal. Yeah, yeah. So we just did a little moral inventory right here. Like yes, we did. That's right. But I think that's you do that. that. That's that's a, a thing that and and that has to be. I feel like for people in their personal devotion, people in, in small group studies, that should be a regular occurrence because it, again progressively living into the kingdom of God is an ongoing, and, and there'll be times where we're better at it, times where we're worse at it, times where one area is stronger than another area, and and that's okay. But if, if, if we constantly are looking at it, praying about it, again, that's the Lord's prayer, praying about the kingdom of God in our lives, in our, in our homes, in our communities, in our world, how we can move the needle. We can move the needle majorly in our own hearts and our own homes, but we can move the needle some in our community. We can move the needle some in the world. If we're constantly looking at praying about the, or regular, I say constantly, regularly going back to those things. But that, that, all of that leans in nicely to where we're going this week. The will of God. Because yeah. we're, 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 we want the will of God. And, and when the will of God and the will of us are the same, it happens. It's, and we're, it's awesome. we're, 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 we're pretty amazed. You yeah. know, that's why you, you can ask, seek, and knock. Well, we're ask, seeking, and knocking the things that are in the will of God. Of course, we're in it, those things are coming to us. Yeah. Uh, so that this all leans very nicely into yeah. this. Because, and that's going to be the, the shift is like, that's, you know, is it my will? Well, it may not be my will, but if we have, if we have to choose between the two. Yeah. Yeah, we get, I don't want to go start start down that path yet. With yeah, the, you gotta sp- don't with, spoil it. Don't spoil it yeah. too much, right? Don't spoil it. We gotta we gotta watch that. But uh, it, this week it is. We are talking about the will of God. You're gonna be in Vine this yes. week for the first Commun- time. Communion uh, is this week for uh, all, all services. services. You're gonna be in Vine this week preaching for the first time. In long time. A it's long, been a couple months. Yeah, it's been a couple months. Uh, I'll be preaching in classic first time in a couple months. I was in classic last week, but just as a, uh, just I would say just that I'm not minimizing it uh, as the assistant, uh, which was fun, which I haven't done that in a long time. So we could baptize baby Walter. So we could baptize baby Walter. And, uh, and then, uh, we'll be back in classic. We'll be back reversed for a week and then we'll be back reversed again. So it's going to be be an odd, odd November. Yeah. yeah. Which is, I mean, that's the nature of it. When we go long stretches in one or the other, then we kind of play around with the schedule keeps people keeps people on their toes yeah keeps people on their toes <laughs> um but if you missed uh, this week's message in our series on the lord's prayer or any one of our messages in previous series or this series be sure to head to our website fpclakeland.org go to the worship page and the sermon archive tab now you can find us on the church center app download the church center app uh from your uh app store the apple app store the google play store you can find the church center app and you can see yep yeah, and pastor right john is showing you right there. Right on yeah. the front page. Sermons, very first item. Sermons right there. Um, if you need more help about how to get the Church Center app, how to connect with us, be sure to email us. We'll be happy to give you a tutorial about how to do that. You can also find a tutorial on our YouTube page, youtube.com backslash FPC Lakeland, where you can also see complete services, Vine Classic. You can watch all of those. You can watch uh, Armchair Preaching. Previous ones previous and now armchair armchair video preaching. versions of the Armchair Preaching. All on YouTube. Make sure YouTube, hit the subscribe button, hit the notifications, the bell icon. That's how you can find out when a new video drops of any kind, whether it's going live on Sunday morning or the armchair preaching uh, services. And uh, you can also find the audio version of this podcast on Apple Podcast or Spotify or SoundCloud. Again, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on so you can find when a new episode drops. Share it with your friends. This is a good way to uh, share the gospel. If you're nervous about sharing the gospel, 
easy way is just to hit the, share this. I mean, we're yeah. in a technological age where yeah. being an evangelist is easier than it's ever been before. And so uh, this is this is probably around 190 episode 190 ish. We're at 187, I think. So so 187. So the ta- the tag for this is is a uh, lengthier. Than, than, than it was at episode 50. Yes, because we've got a lot more options. A lot more options a to choose for, options. From, from, for, for hearing this yeah. and seeing this now. Church Center, uh, all sorts of video options. Our YouTube page has gotten a lot more traction, and so we're really grateful for that. Um, but John, as always, great to see. And you got a bow tie on. We, we have a different look today. I got no. I got a, a, a much smaller yeah. beard, which yeah. I explained in the sermon. Yeah. And you've got a bow tie on. Yeah, so, just a just a day to put a bow tie on. Which is which is big, that maybe the first time since we've been on uh, video that you've oh, right, a bow tie. Right, bow tie. Yeah. You, well, you've worn a bow tie on the podcast sure. before, but nobody and saw it. As as um as uh, I've said several times, uh, the bow ties around here, thanks to Dr. Paul Sewich, Always. bow ties are uh, contagious. They so stick be. around long enough, you'll have a bow tie on. At least I saw so. Richard Phillips coming in with a, a bow tie on. I said, aha, see? It's there. It's there. It's there. Well, right. thank you, Pastor thanks, John. Thanks, everybody. Good and to see you. We'll see everybody next time.